In other news, a huge sigh of relief for some 300 Guahan Academy Charter School students and their parents as a benevolent act is saving them from eviction. PNC's Melissa Leon Guerrero reports on the update from this morning's emergency working session. Current crisis averted. That was the message given to the council this morning at the emergency session. The relief came via Nanchul Shin Trust representative Dongmin Chang, who says the company is an advocate of education both here and in Hawaii, and they never wanted to see the students displaced. What we came to conclusion was the eviction notice will be rescinded from the school. GAC's Board of Trustees Chair Faye Ovalas expressed the relief felt by everyone involved. Really, we're so grateful because uh, the board of, board of Trustees, as, as, as I mentioned to you on the last, uh, yes, on the last email I sent you, that we have to split our outreach and God bless you and the Shin Trust. As you may recall, the GAC's Board of Trustees was handed an eviction notice on February 7th after missing two of its payments, totaling nearly a quarter million dollars. The agreement announced today came after GAC submitted a partial payment of $45,000 to Shin Trust. That amount, says Chang, matches the previous payment they've received from GAC's. We have received two, two checks of $45,000, one in the beginning of the agreements and one yesterday. The forgiven amount, adds Chang, would be an in-kind donation to the school. He said they hoped that with this agreement, it would alleviate a lot of the stress by the council, school, parents and students. Now the students are able to ride out the school year at their current campus. School lets out on June 15th, and Gax must vacate the property by June 30th. This means a bullet was dodged regarding moving students mid-year, and no double sessions would be held. But it also opens up a whole new set of questions, most prominently, what facility they would be using next year. Council member Frankie Tovez. Did I misunderstand it that uh, after June, then... There, there will be no uh, contract for sale and that the, the school must seek another facility? Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. As for now, the LPA is already null and void as of January 31st because the payment wasn't made and everything. Okay. It was a default. So the land purchase agreement was already null and void. He says come June 30th, the company will be once again taking over the property. Council Chair Blas asked Ovalis whether two weeks would be enough time for them to vacate the property, which Ovalis confirmed it would be. Also of concern, Tovez asked, what was the source of the $45,000? Ovalis gave her a response. We have provision in all our budgets, all of these facilities expansion, and we budgeted for that. That's all budgeted money in our, in our books, so uh, that basically is what that will come back to the allotment people. I hope that we'll be paid back again too to the allotment process and if there's any any issues with that, let us know. But for now, that's all the money that we have in our books yesterday. We wish we had 145000 yesterday, but that's all that we can offer. DOE Chief Auditor Frank Cooper Nurse questioned the use of government funds for yesterday's check. He went on record saying they will be reviewing the fact that the money didn't go through their process of validation. Reporting for PNC News, I'm Melissa Leon Guerrero. Law said they'll be doing an annual review of both charter schools as is required by law. At that time, they'll be discussing the action plan GAX has for next year and beyond. Meanwhile, the GAX board will be meeting with school parents tomorrow at 4 p.m. after PTO President Jolene Tovis called for their transparency.